for staying with us here on SGL TV Live. I'm back with Olivia Engel from Green Dining Alliance. And when we took off, we were talking about sort of the core things that restaurants can do to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. I think when we usually think about it, though, it's like waste, you know, but we don't always think about, unless you watch a food show, Gordon Ramsay, right. how much food gets thrown right. away. So talk about what, I guess, with the composting that you emphasize, because there's so much food that gets thrown away, essentially. That's a huge issue in, in all of America, and not just St. Louis. And if you look at most American restaurants, about 75% of their waste is recyclable, either organic recycling, which is composting, or you know single stream recycling, which is your aluminum and glass, et cetera. So there's no reason why we should be putting these resources that can be used for, like can be funneled back into our economy, can be made into new things. There's no reason to take those resources and put them in the landfill, especially since anything made from organic matter, like trees, food, those, so those food scraps, mm -hmm. that's gonna release methane in the atmosphere when it's in a landfill. Sure. So the best thing we can do is get it into the St. Louis economy. So when you talk about the composting, I mean, how, because you see with restaurants, I mean, they'll just dump it. They yeah. clean off the planes and dump right. it. So how do you, how does Green Dining Alliance sort of approach composting to a restaurant? Do you like go build a compost, you know, <laughs> out in the back or? Well, actually St. Louis is one of just a few cities in the United States that has commercial industrial composting infrastructure. Okay. There's only about 3% of United States cities that has it, and we do. So we should be taking advantage of that. And um, it's called St. Louis Composting. They're actually a sponsor of ours. And we place a lot of emphasis on staff training when we talk to restaurants about implementing composting. Because just because you have the bin, and then you have another bin. It doesn't mean people are going to be sorting it properly when they're in a rush in the back of the kitchen. I've worked in a lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. so I know how it is. But if you can just talk with people about what it really means to compost, it's, you get much more efficacy across the board, mm -hmm. and then your investment in composting is you know, really good. Good, good use is coming out of it. So when we talk about a sustainable restaurant, let's get some specific examples, because again, I know we, earlier we were saying a lot of people think about the waste mm -hmm. you know, element in the food, but there's more than that. So there's yes. the chemical component. Why don't you just give me some specific example of the differences of what's a sustainable restaurant and not a sustainable restaurant, so people at home can understand that and okay. the importance of it. Yeah, well, most restaurants are using bleach and quat, which, are, which is an ammonia-based chemical, if you want to talk specifically on that side. And those are things that leave residue. Hmm. So anytime you use bleach, there's a toxic residue that's left behind that gets in touch with food and people. That's why we try to push botanical-based things, like Better Life. I think the picture that we featured has a, a Better Life container. Um, and there are other options like that, too. Okay. Um, on Outside of waste, again, we think a lot about what's thrown away, but mm -hmm. the best way to do it is to reduce the waste in the first place. So buying food in bulk, making sure that you're cooking in bulk, making sure that you're doing cross utilization so that if you have extra bread, you can make it into croutons. Things like that are very important in restaurants because otherwise they're just throwing money away. And do you feel like when you're talking to a chef about this, that from a culinary standpoint, they're aware of this? I mean, is this something that you learn in culinary school, like how to be efficient on the environmental side in, in in serving your diners and running a restaurant? I think for most business owners, they, they function on a single bottom line, and we want to function on a, fo focus on a uh, triple bottom line. I see. So environmental, social, and economic sustainability. And that's something that we try to push. Before we go, tell me about you have an upcoming event that's really for a way to get diners engaged. We do. We really want to call on diners to, to engage in this because it's a fun way to be involved. Um, every month, we have a dine out, and we pick a GDA certified restaurant, and we just call on the St. Louis public to come have dinner with your friends and family just as you would any other night out but you're intentionally supporting a GDA certified restaurant with the GDA okay and so what's the date for that again that's gonna be this Thursday it's this at Thursday. Water Street in Maplewood which is st. Louis's first green dining district and um, we will be there from 530 to 8 and who knows maybe the next time you're here we'll have multiple green dining districts that's in our goals yeah <laughs> well if you want to find out more information about GDA which is also Green Dining Alliance we have the information there right there on your screen it's a nonprofit certification program and help helping St. Louis restaurants but really as Olivia described it's both for the restaurants as well as for the diners so go to their website to learn more information and when you go out dining look for a sticker in the window for restaurants that have been certified as green but again it's Green Dining Alliance Dot org. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. This is yeah. really interesting. Very interesting. And good luck with uh, good luck with your you know future restaurants and partnerships and work in the community. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity <laughs> to share. All right. Thanks. Well, when we return on STL TV Live, we'll chat with Lynette Schipbach from the Highland Art in the Park event that's coming up. We'll be right back after this.